So now let's talk about complex numbers. What time does this class end? Yeah. Like, so when it comes to the quadratic equations, could you use either one of those three to solve them or take this one better? Problem? If it doesn't specify, yes, you can. However, on the lab work, so on the exam, you can use any one you want. I don't care. I don't look at your work. So therefore, it's not going to be graded that part. You just do the right or wrong. On the lab work, however, if it tells you a certain way to do it, you have to do it that way. You have to show it to me that way. Does that make sense? Yes, and what is lab work? What is lab work? That's the one that is, uh, that is um, due every week at 6 p.m. And it That's is the one that... Is the one in orange? Okay. It is this one right here. There you go. Oh, here, let me go back. Is this orange one right here? That's the level one. When you click on it, it gives you the PDF right here. This is 10 multiple choice questions, but you got to pretend it's not multiple choice. You got to pretend it's open ended questions, but you already know what the answers are. Right? That's the lab work. Right? So that one you have to show work. Now, the MLM, which is the purple, that is just the homework. You don't have that work doesn't need to be shown. I don't really care about that. Right? So get it done. <laughs> Fair enough? All right. Go back. Complex numbers. Wow. That's very crooked. Sorry, guys. There we go. I'm crooked. So this is. A plus EI form. Yes, my I always has a tail because I want to make sure that you know it's an I. It's not a one where the dot on the I, you can't really see that as a dot, right? Always put the tail on there. So, complex number is the combination of a real part and an imaginary part, right? The A is the real part. And the B is the imaginary part. I gotta remember that this is the first time video. I gotta be somewhat neat. This is not very neat, sorry. All right, and it's the imaginary part because it's attached with the eye. So, add it. And subtract. For me, I would tell you, treat the I as if it was an X, right? Just like if it was a variable. Right? So if I had, for example, 2 minus 4I minus 5 plus 2I, I'm subtracting, but this is telling me I have to distribute that negative through. So I would stack these two. So I write down the two minus four I, and then I got to subtract the five and subtract the two I because I got to distribute that negative through. Then I can add these and get, very good, you guys are so quick. You guys remember all of that, right? Down. <laughs> what the? 
Oh, that's the other thing I didn't break down up here. That's why I left the A plus B on all the way to the left. Is because the other thing you guys need to know is that we're going to replace um, square root of negative one for i. And anytime we see i squared, we're going to replace it with negative one. Right? Because the whole purpose of i is so that I can take the square root of negative numbers. Right? And if I square the i, the square and the square root will go away, so we'll be left with a negative one. Okay, so let's talk about multiplying. So what do I do with this? Eh? What does that square mean? Twice. Huh? Square square each one separately? No. Square to seven, square to negative four? No. No. <laughs> so what am I supposed to do with that? Multiply seven. You you write the equation twice. twice. You, you guys think I need to be more social and open, clear and focused, mm -hmm. rebuilding cover, recover? Clear and focused. All right. Yeah, you would want to write this out twice. Absolutely. You guys are probably thinking I'm crazy right now. I have to get questions like that. All right. Now we either FOIL or double distribute. Okay, I always offer as FOIL or double distribute. If you're double distributing, you might want to do it this way. You write the first term of the first group, the second term of the first group. Now I would do this only because it will help me when it comes down to Radicals. If I was to do radicals, this would make it a lot easier to see. Okay. So what do I get here? I'm going to get a 49 minus 28i minus 28i plus 16i squared. Did I lose anybody yet? No? So far, it's too easy? Need to go faster? Is that what we need? No? No. All right. So, so, so. So is that what we got? No. No. What the shit? Uh, oh. No? Not at all. Hmm. Fine. <laughs> How about this? No. no. Yeah. What? Let's see. So remember why I said oh, yeah. I square is I negative one. one. That's why. Negative one times 16 becomes negative 16. So I got 49 minus 16. So if I do 
do this, I'll do it this way. Is that fair? Would that make it a little bit more clear now? Oh, I haven't done the body yet. Dang. Okay, let's talk about divide. So I talked about add, subtract, I talked about multiply. Now we got to talk about divide. So the divide is a little bit different because, and, and the reason why it's separated is because. If it was dividing by a monomial, the process is different than dividing by a binomial. And we got to be careful. Do we remember the differences? Professor Chen, I have a question. Sorry. Um, when it says 16 I squared, why didn't you bring down the I squared again? At negative one. Oh, OK. Right, because it's right here, I squared is negative one. Okay, perfect. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? No. Thank you for doing that. I, I that that's why I want you guys to do it. Just unmute yourself and ask because I don't mind stopping whatsoever or explain anything that needs to be. Yes. That means you multiply the sixteen and a negative one. Yep. I multiply the sixteen times the negative one to get the negative sixteen. Absolutely. Because remember, right in between here is just multiplication, right? So that's why it would have to be a multiplication. Absolutely. So let's say, for example, I got seven divided by three i. Okay. Okay. So that's a monomial. And because that's a monomial, I just have I can't have the i in the denominator because I can't have radicals in the denominator, and i is just the square root of negative one. Right? So I can't have that i in the denominator. But the three is allowed to be there. Okay? So all I have to do is I'm going to multiply the bottom by i to get rid of that i in the denominator, but if I divide an i in the denominator, I have to? <laughs> got to do it to the top as well. What is it, Olga for Olga? If I watch, um, no, I, I was thinking about um, Umbrella Academy. That's what I was thinking about. Maybe I watched it. Well, you know I mean. Venice. Where the Swiss guy came and killed Venice, and then and then they looked up her pet girls, called the girl, and thought that the name was Olga Faroga, but it really means I play I. Okay, I don't remember that huge joke. It was painted on the floor in blood. That show was crazy. Yeah. It was. But the really good part. It's very the last season, eight, uh, last season episodes eight, nine, and ten. Was awesome. All right. But anyway, right? Because again, the denominator is. I has I, which is the I squared. I squared is negative one. Negative one times three is negative three. But notice I didn't box that because I can't have a negative in the denominator either. Ooh, this brings up a good point. Yes? Why did he uh Well, remember it's three times I squared. Oh. Right? So the I has I and then I squared, I squared one. 
So I probably should have done these. Okay. Let me ask you guys this. What if this problem asked for A plus B I four? What would the answer be then? If it says I want it in A plus B I four. Plus no no minus. Since there is no real part, that means the real part is going to be zero. And knowing how the seven i divided by three became the seven thirds i because it wants an a real part plus b imaginary part i form. Okay. I don't want the I intermingled in there. I want to know where the I is versus the imaginary part. But what if this was a binomial? What if this was a binomial? Then how do I divide? Um, Which is called a? Yes, it's called a conjugate. No, no, no. I, I can't get the exactly. So we got to multiply this by the 2 minus 3i. And since we multiply the bottom by 2 minus 3i, we got to multiply the top by 2 minus 3i. And that is called the conjugate. So in the conjugate, the terms are exactly the same, except one's a positive, one's a negative, or one's addition, one's subtraction, which is a kind of, uh, kind of like the difference of two squares, right? The top I have to distribute, and I get a 14 minus 21i, and the bottom, I don't actually have to FOIL. If I recognize that it is a conjugate, if I was to FOIL, my OI goes away. Now, I want you guys to picture that. I don't have to FOIL, F-O-I-L, because my FOIL conjugate, my OI, O-I, goes away. So all I have to do is do this. Meaning, all I have to do is do first and last, which I believe, if my hooked on phonics works, is good. I don't know how else to pronounce that. All right. You guys think I have a few screws loose for probably not. So the first gives me four, and the L left gives me a negative nine I squared. <laughs> That's totally wrong. <laughs> That's way, way off. Now I'm right. But what is this A, a plus B I for? Keep on going. Holding the two minus. Okay, That's fine. Now, when you separate these, and if the fraction can still reduce, you reduce them. Okay? 
You already do stuff. Any other questions? Nada? None. So again, don't forget with monomials is one process, with binomials, totally different process. It's going to be the conjugate, which means you can, right? All the fun things. All right.